Good morning, Overall Middle School students. This is Mr. Woolley. And remember, the information contained in this video is intended to be viewed only by the students in Mr. Woolley's classroom. By watching the video, you'll agree that you will not record or share the video with anyone who is not a student in Mr. Woolley's classroom. All right, we're in Lesson 6, using tree diagrams to represent a sample space and calculate probabilities. All right, so here's our first job in Example 1. It says, imagine that a family decides to play a game each night. They all agree to use a tetrahedral die, a four-sided pyramidal die, where each of the four outcomes equally likely each night to randomly determine if they're going to play a board game, which we'll call B, or a card game, C. The tree diagram mapping the possible overall outcomes over two consecutive nights will be developed below. To make a tree diagram, first present all possibilities for the first stage on Monday. Well, on Monday, you can get a board game or a card game. All right. Then, from each branch of the first stage, attach all the possibilities to the second stage. Well, if you have a board game Monday, and on Tuesday, you can still get a board game or a card game. Or on Monday, if you happen to get a card game first, then you can still get a board game or card game the next day. So outcomes, you can get two nights of board games. You get board game the first night, card game the second night. Card game the first night, board game the second night, or both nights of card games. So four total outcomes there, which we probably already knew because if you get board game or card game, that's two outcomes on Monday, Board game or card game, two outcomes on Tuesday. Two times two gives us four, and there's our four combinations. All right. So if the situation had more than two stages, the process would be repeated until all stages have been presented. So I, if I had to go like on Wednesday, I'd branch off from the B and go BC. I'd branch off from the C and go BC, and so on. I'd keep branching off from everything from Tuesday. All right. So on A, it says if BB represents two straight nights of board games, what does CB represent? Well, CB means card game first night and board game on the second night. List the outcomes where exactly one board game is played over two days. Well, if we look at that, exactly one. Well, that's two of them. There's one board game, there's one board game, and that's it. So I got B, C, and C, B. There's only two outcomes that show that. All right, moving on to our next page. We're going to work the same table here, but now we're going to do a little bit more. So as an example one, each night's outcome is a result of a chance experiment, rolling the tetrahedral die. Thus, there's a probability associated with each night's outcome. By multiplying the probabilities of the outcomes at each stage, we can obtain the probability for each branch of the tree. In this case, we can figure out the probability of each of the four outcomes, BB, BC, CB, and CC. Or B stands for board games, C stands for card games. For this family, a card game will be played if the die lands showing a value of 1. So if you roll a 1, you're going to play a card game that night. A board game will be played if the die lands on a 2, 3, or a 4. This makes the probability of a board game on a given night 0 0.75, or 3 out of 4. So only one out of the four possibilities here will be a chance to play a board game, or sorry, a card game. And then three out of the four possibilities, you're going to be playing a board game. All right? So three out of four means 0 0.75. And then one out of four means 0 0.25. If you remember how to convert fractions to decimals, three-fourths is 0.75, one-fourth is 0.25. All right, so, any, so on Monday, you roll. You got three out of four chances to get board game, one out of four chances to get card game. On Tuesday, same thing. You roll again, you got three out of four, 0 0.75 chances to play board game, and 0 0.25 to get the card game, and so on. You can see our probabilities here. Now, what's the chances of getting board game board game on two nights? We'll just take your probabilities and multiply them. 0 0.75 times 0 0.75, you get 0 0.5625. What's the chances of getting a board game first and a card game the next night? 0.75 times 0.25, and you get 0 0.1875. What's the chances of getting a card game on the first night, board game the second night? 0.25 times 0.75 gives me 0 0.1875. And what's the chance of getting a card game on both nights? Card game, card game. Take 0 0.25 times 0 0.25, and you get 0 0.0625. So as far as percents go, you got just over a 56% chance of that happening almost a 19% chance, almost a 19% chance, and a little over 6% chance of that happening. All right, so we've already figured this out, figured out all the probabilities for these events happening. So now, that's all set. Oh, hold on just a second, one more question here, sorry. What's the probability there will be exactly one night of board games over the two nights? Well, if you look at your information here, I got board game here, board game here. And then that's a 0.1875, a 0.1875, add them together at the end, and 
I get 0 0.375 or 37.5 percent chance they're gonna have at least one of those board games there all right next up so it says two friends met at a grocery store and marked the neighboring family just welcomed their second child it turns out that both children in the family are girls and they're not twins so they had a kid that was a girl and then a little bit later they had another kid that was a girl one of the friends is curious about what the chances of having two girls are in the family's first two births. Suppose that for each birth, the probability of a boy birth is 0 0.5, and the probability of a girl is 0 0.75. So they're even chances, like a 50-50 chance. So, one, draw a tree diagram demonstrating the four possible birth outcomes for a family of two children with no twins. Use the symbol B for boy, G for girl, and the first birth is the first stage. So, first kid, you could have a boy or a girl. You have a 50-50 chance of that happening. Move on to the second kid. Well, if you had a boy first, you could have a boy or a girl. If you had a girl first, you could have a boy or a girl in the second kid also. Now, boy, boy, 0 0.5 from 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. Have a boy first, girl second, 0 0.5 from 0 0.5, 0 0.25. As you can see, they all end up being 0 0.25 or a one-fourth chance of happening. So, you had a one out of four chance of having two boys, one out of four chance of having a boy, then a girl, one out of four chance to have a girl than a boy. One out of four chance to have two girls. All right, so we get that all set up in a tree diagram. Here's our question. What is the probability of having a, of a family having two girls in this situation? Well, two girls, girl, girl, was 0 0.25 we figured out. Is that greater or less than the probability of having exactly one girl? Well, one girl, boy than a girl, that's one girl, 0.25. Girl first then a boy, that's exactly one girl, 0.25. Together, I'd have to add those total because there's a couple different categories that have one girl, 0 0.5. So the probability of having two girls is less because it's only 25% chance of happening than having exactly one because so you get a 50% chance of that happening because if based off our data, that's our results. All right, well, thank you for watching and go ahead and see what you get working on school.